All right, welcome to Dishonored 2. Um, it's very exciting that I'm actually gonna put this up as a walkthrough. It's just I've played this game I don't even know how many times at this point. It's like ten. Um, but anyway, so I'm writing a thesis on narrative theory in video games and how the two go together. And Dishonored 2 is one of my primary examples. So have to record all the playthroughs anyway because I need them so I can screen cap and reference stuff. So I figured I'd put it up as a walkthrough. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're basically going to do a new game campaign, Low Chaos, with Emily Caldwin. Um, because as much as I love using all the powers, we're gonna start from scratch. For those of you who haven't played this game for the first time, um, for those of you who haven't played Dishonored or Dishonored 2, I will be spoiling plot things probably pretty early because I can't trust myself not to, um, and also I need to do so for uh, capping references. But, so if you're interested in going through all of Dishonored 2 with absolutely no idea of what's coming next, this might not be the right video for you. But if you're interested in hearing all about lore bits and secret details and things I didn't even find until the 10th playthrough, then let's go. We're also going to do- we're playing on easy because suck it. Um, and we're doing the tutorial for- so those of you who haven't done so can see it because I think it's very heartwarming in um, low chaos. Done wall. So this is during the period after the interregnum when Corvo is training Emily how to fight because um, he wants her to be able to defend herself given the events that occurred during the first game in the Rat Plague where Emily was kidnapped by Dowd and his men, kept in the Golden Cat by the Pendleton brothers for a while, and then kidnapped yet again um, by Havelock and his crew. So, let's get started with training with Dad. I remember training with my father in the years after the Rat Plague. Someday, he said, our enemies will come for you. They will. Alright, so, starts out. It's pretty much the same mechanics as one. Good old foggy Dunwall. Look at that. This would be perfect to blink to. But we don't have blink because we are a mere mortal. So, let's get started. The sounds and smells of Dunwall never change much. Look at that whale. This is my city. So for those of you unfamiliar with uh, the lore of Dishonored, Dunwall is basically a city that runs entirely on whale oil powered electricity. So whaling is a huge thing here. Um, in the second game it's mentioned quite a few times that the uh, source of whale oil, uh, which is the whales that they kill and bring back in, um, isn't doing so hot because the whales tend to. Uh, what training regimen does Father have in store for me All today? All right, Majesty. We'll stop talking Let's about whales. Let's see what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically the whales are all dying, so that's not good. All right, crouching. You press C. You go under shit. It's pretty cool. You press space. You go over shit. You run, and you do this. This one. This Sprint, one. Vault the obstacle, then slide under. Thanks, Dad. Oh, fuck. Damn it! I've done this before. I have done this ten times. I swear. There we go. Okay. All now right. that we've gotten off Good. to that great start, uh, let's just take a moment What's to. What's next? appreciate this. So the first game has a lot of posters up. It's usually the same ones. Um, you can see there's vestiges of the rat plague in here. Um, oh, you can't zoom in yet, but kill the rats. That's not actually something you see in the first game, um, but no one can keep us from death um, is something you do. So it does imply us that this is after the game enough to have, uh, you know, ads for disinfectant fluid um, and shoes and stuff over but not quite that you can cover a shit like that up. So, this is still close enough to the Rat Plague. I would put this at, it kind of, it gives you a non-official estimate, but I would say this is probably Teenage Emily. Swimming time. You can swim faster in this version. It's amazing. 
you couldn't do that in the first game. <sighs> We're about to get the other thing that I think is real great about- oh, climbing time. They fix chains, which is nice. Um, you can also do non-lethal takedowns on enemies that have been alerted, which is a godsend. If only I could spend every day running and jumping. For low chaos. <sighs> now let's so, see how quick my feet are. Yes, your feet are so fast. Come to me. Yes. We have come to you. You've learned well. Yeah. Let's see how quiet you are, young lady. This is the funniest shit. Stealth. Press C to toggle stealth mode. Don't stand in light. Cover helps. Um, on easy, it's pretty great. Um, yeah. We're gonna sneak on Corvo, and we're gonna choke him. Father's always on about the value of quiet feet. This is true. So it does emphasize stealth in the tutorial. The game as a whole is pretty big on stealth, whether that's lethal or- Oh! Oh! Oh man. Sorry. I have been distracted. No. Again. Without letting me see you. Uh, sorry, Dad. This is going so great, Oops. guys. Got spotted. Usually he doesn't turn around that fast. <laughs> he pats you on the hand to let him go. It's so nice. That's and my fatherly. girl. All right. So pickpocketing is let me hear you or see you. pretty great. Um. It's pretty nice in this game. Didn't see anything at all. Nope. Nobody saw it. Quiet as a lynx stalking a gazelle. If you're at the edge of their peripheral vision. We're a lynx. Alright. Shooting is pretty much the same. Remember, crossbow. A pistol will wake up everyone in the building. This is true. Your crossbow is quiet. Boing. Okay, so we're also late enough that you can see taxes, 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 which we get a lot in Cardano. Oh, fuck. I'm so good at this game, guys. I just know a lot about this game. I'm, like, on the side of good-ish at this game. Alright, so... Time for some here we more go. Weapons and combat training. Great stuff. Let's beat each other up, shall we? Oh, we're supposed to attack in this tutorial. Yes. You hit hard. That's my daughter. I'm such a good daughter. When someone swings a sword at you, block. Yes. Ah. Good. Oop. Block with your blade. Come on. Well done. Come on. All right. Very good. You've got a natural instinct for fighting. Yes, we do. If you time your block right, you'll throw an enemy off balance. Done well, whiskey. Um. Yep. You're quick. Smart move. That oh, whiskey stop is even still the great. most black-hearted killer. Yes, I think it's not. You can choke an enemy out. Is that even in a flooded district? Alright, oh yeah, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. This is so great. This literally makes my life so much easier in low chaos. Because low chaos, you generally have to tend towards ghosting. Um, and you can't really intervene in certain Over situations. The fatality. Oh, well, practice the fatality, I guess. In certain situations. Ah! How did you hit me from that far away? Oh, yeah, we're supposed to perform a fatality. We're not. He's so approving. In certain situations, you couldn't feel better uh, knowing you can take care of yourself. With um, certain areas and the trouble does finally come, you would alert somebody. You're ready to fight. Um, so you would just have to avoid it if you were playing low chaos, because you, once you alerted people, you couldn't take them out. The other thing I like about this tutorial is how he emphasizes the low chaotic solutions first, which tend to imply that Corvo is canonically low ish chaos so they said corvo was canonically low chaos in the first game the something in the first mission implies otherwise but we'll get there when we get there 